Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. So in the Holy Church, we have many great ascetics who work on hesychasm. They want to become silent, and so they pray and they pray. And this pericope we just read testifies to their life. Because Christ said, if your lie, if your eye is full of darkness, how great is this darkness. But if your eye is full of light, then your whole body is full of light. And what does this mean? Does he mean the eyes of the face? Well, there are many men who are blind, and yet their souls are full of light. So we cannot say that the eyes of the face are what he speaks of. Rather, he speaks of the highest faculty of the soul, that is the noose. The noose is the highest part of a man's soul. It's his attention. Right? When a man's mind is full of thoughts, these thoughts come from many places. And where is his attention? Right? We have a subconscious with thoughts that flow in and out of them all the time. Oftentimes thoughts that are nonsensical. These thoughts do not become the mind. These are not the center of the soul. This is, this is one aspect of a man's thought, one aspect of his mind. His news is where his attention is. And his heart is where his meaning comes. And so the fathers say that your attention should be upon your heart, that you mean what you say, but your attention is fixed upon it. And your mind does not wander, but it is in one place. The attention of our being should always be upon God. Not just to escape bad thoughts, evil thoughts. Christ says, if your soul is dark, it is dark indeed. But also, he goes on, he starts to preach to the people about earthly cares. Because so much of what darkens the mind is not only direct sins, lust, fornication, greed, evil things, but the worries of this life. And the Holy Father say, those who want to pray have to get rid of the cares of this life. In fact, St. Joseph the Hezekiah said, I was amazed. He said, when I studied scripture, I found that anxiety and worry and the cares of this life is life to God unto drunkenness. Because when a man is drunk, he knows not where he's going. He doesn't, he doesn't have his attention in the proper order. He can't have attention. Right? That's why he make, has accidents and says strange things and does strange things. Because his attention is gone. He can't focus on anything. But when we are full of anxiety, we can't hide it. And so what Christ is saying is the world is not about raiment, it's not about food, it's not about houses, it's not about these things. He says, indeed, your Heavenly Father is not ignorant. He knows that you need all of these things. But this isn't life. It never was life. Life is to have your mind, the news, your attention on God, in your heart. This is where everything belongs. We live in the world, and so we have the great cares of the world thrust upon us. And yet, we can live in the world as though we are not of the world. St. Gregory Palamas' father was a senator. He was a senator in Constantinople. He had all kinds of earthly business. He would be called in to talk to the emperor himself. And they said that his father was so intense in his prayer that sometimes his father would fall into ecstasies in the middle of meetings in which the emperor would be present, there would be some kind of council, and St. Gregory Palamas' dad would be in some kind of ecstasy praying, and the emperor would suddenly say, Constantine, what are you doing? And he would wake up and go, oh, you know, your majesty, <laughs> you've come back to the earth, you've come back from heaven again. And his father, so this was the man who raised St. Gregory Palamas, and he was never a monk. Maybe his father died as a monk. He died, he was tonsured a monk in the, at the end of his life. Maybe this is so. This was not how he lived most of his life, and this was not where he found his sanctity. He became sanctified in the world. Now, you can see why people run to the desert, because all these earthly cares choke out everything else. And so they run to the desert, so they have no earthly cares. But you know what? You can go to the desert and not escape cares there either. You know, when St. Joseph the Hesychus was reposing, he said to one of his disciples, Elder Herolambos, he said to him, cut out the cares. And the elder said, what do you, the, the father said, what do you mean, elder? He said, cut out the cares. And the man said, father, what do you mean? He said, cut out the cares. And the man said, okay. And he said, later when I became an abbot, I knew exactly what he meant. It was that my life was just cares all the time. Cares and cares and cares and worries and anxieties. And he said, I had to learn to change my whole life so I could get rid of these cares and have peace to pray. And it's not by running from them, it's by giving them to God and learning to manage them. Everyone has cares. The monastery is full of cares. St. Gregory the theologian came back to his parents having become Christian and he said, I will become a philosopher. I will become a man given only to God. That's what he meant by philosophy. Nothing to God. And when he came home, what happened? His dad, as the bishop said, guess what, son? My diocese needs a priest and you're going to become it. And he started to cry, he ran to his friend Basil the Great in the desert and hung out there for a while until the food became so bad that he went home again. And his dad said, okay, son, we're going to make you a priest now. And he was forced to be one. 
and with the priesthood came all the cares that come with them. And yet he managed these cares. He had to deal with them. And so, beloved, this is why we say to Jesus, we're not as some mantra that we utter and, and, and throw up in the air, but so that we learn to order our mind around it, that our noose, that our attention is always on this prayer, that we return to it. Yes, when we're driving, yes, when we're walking, yes, when we go places, our attention gets caught up in earthly business. It cannot help but do so. But we can recenter it again. And if we're doing menial tasks, we can learn that our we can learn to focus our attention on our heart as we pray and do basic things. This is why the fathers always wore baskets. They would do things like this. This is what they how they earned their bread. They would weave prayer ropes, or they would make baskets, or they would do these things that required no deep intellectual engagement because they wanted to give their mind to Christ, to, to prayer. Now, can all people have this? No. Because this one elder in Russia, people came up to him and they said, Elder, why doesn't everyone have this prayer? And he said, well, then who would, who would cook then? <laughs> and who would sow the fields? And who would, like, do anything? Like, you know, no. I mean, God gives, God grants this prayer to those who are worthy of it and those who are of the highest position. But many others, he doesn't give this because the world will fall apart. And yet, at the same time, even those can climb to higher and higher places in prayer. Right? Even those who have earthly business can learn to do their earthly business with prayer. In fact, everything that you do with prayer becomes blessed. People would go to see St. Joseph and they would be amazed at the garbage they would eat. And yet they said, this is the best food that I've ever had in my life. One time this emperor of, of, of Byzantium was walking and he saw a monk in this like shack, in this hovel, it was like a hermit. And the emperor said, I'll come in. And the monk said, your highness, your majesty, do you want to eat? And he said, yeah, sure, what do you eat here? And the monk put before him, I don't even know what it was, some bread, you know, I mean, some basic thing, there was nothing. And the emperor ate it and said, this is the best meal that I've ever had in my life. And I'm the emperor of the entire world. And the monk said, do you know why that is, O most glorious emperor? And he said, why is that? He said, because this food is made with prayer. Whereas in your kingdom, things are made with sin. You don't pray when you make food, you sin. And so the food tastes bad, no matter how much spices you put into it, no matter how much you try to burn it, it tastes awful. You know, St. Joseph had these, like, grapes that grew in Manapolis. Like, nothing grows in Manapolis in the area that he lived in. It was like nothing. He lived in this awful part of Manapolis. And yet he would get these little grapes, you know, like kind of shriveled little wine that would like creep out of this rock. And he would like gather these little grapes and he would make wine, like for communion and for other things. And one time this man from France came, like this is France, he came. And St. Joseph offered him some of this wine. And the Frenchman for the rest of his life raved about the wine that he drank in Manathus, in St. Joseph's little monastery. He said, this is amazing. Forgive me, I'll tell you one more story about this, about prayer, and about obedience too. One time, St. Joseph, when he was just beginning his life on Mount Athos, very early on, he and his co-struggler, Elder Arsenios, they would make these little, they would make little handcrafts, they would give them to the monasteries, and their payment was not money, it was a sack of bread, a sack of dry bread, a sack of rusks, what they call it. And they were ascetics, this was great, this is how they lived. And so one time, they went to the monastery, and they handed him, they handed him a huge bag, it was very heavy, heavier than normal. And Arsenios, the elder, opened the bag, and he found that they had given them an a rotten bag full of worms and maggots that was eating this disgusting bread, this disgusting, rotting, soaked bread. Somehow water had seeped in and somehow rot had taken in. And this is how hardcore St. Joseph was. Elder Saint said, Elder, this is the bread that you've given us. And of course, Elder Saint was starting to get upset. And St. Joseph said, be quiet. This is what God has provided. Eat it. And they ate it. Literally, they ate handfuls of maggots along with this bread. Forgive me, I'm sorry. That's what they did. And Elder Saint said, this tastes like honey. St. Joseph said, now you understand the fruit of prayer and obedience. This is garbage, but it tastes like honey. Why? Because we ate it with prayer and with obedience, and this is how we live. But see, the, this is what happens when men have their noose in the right order. When their noose is full of darkness and we're consumed by evil thoughts, then everything is dark. You could be an emperor, you could be surrounded by money and Ferraris, whatever you want. Whatever you think is an exalted life, and it'll be garbage. I read this thing about all these rock stars. They climb to the top. And when they climb to the top of being some rock star, they find that it's empty. Even though they have all this money, they have all this stuff. And they have drugs, and they have everything that they need to keep them high, to keep them in this good state. And yet many of them die suicide. Because the top is awful without God. Right? And yet, St. Joseph and Elder St. are eating maggots, and it tastes like honey. And it tastes even better than the food that these rock stars are eating at, you know, $5,000 a plate restaurants, wherever they're going. Who cares? It doesn't matter. And so the point being is what Christ is saying is life is is having your, your attention pure, and your attention focused with your heart upon God. And if you live like this, who cares if you live in a shack? Or if, you, or if you're like St. Gregory Palamas' dad, who's a senator, who actually cares where you are? Because the outcome is the same. 
St. Gregory Palmas's father lived in God, and so did that monk in the shack that the emperor went and talked to. They were both in the same place, because that's where their heart was, and that's where their mind was. Yes, take care for the things of this world. Provide, be intelligent, be wise. Set aside money. Do not be frivolous or careless, but also don't be stingy. Use what you have to glorify God. Use what you have to honor him. You know, don't, don't worship your possessions because you will not take them with you. When you die, you'll be thrown, you'll be laid into a, into a, into a coffin, and the negus will eat you. And that's it. There's nothing else. And eventually, even the wood of the coffin will decompose. We can't take anything with us. At the same time, should we be wise? Yes, be wise. Be wise. But be wiser still by learning to purify your attention, by learning to pray properly. So then your soul is in the right order, your heart is in the right order, and you're with God. And regardless of where you are, what your vocation is, what your job is, you go with God. May God, in his wisdom, grant us to learn how to pray properly, that we might not live in pairs, but live in his peace, which he longs to give us, always, now and ever, and to the ages of ages.